My name is Summer Love and I am 38 years old. I am currently in the joint, which is really the hospital, but I call it the joint. I am on day 12 of a two week stay and I am in here because I have cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease. It's recessive. So both my parents are carriers of the cystic fibrosis gene. And then you have a one in four chance that your child will have it. Basically it affects your lungs and your digestive system. When we sweat out, we sweat out salt. The salt throughout my body is not um, working properly. So everybody has mucus in their body, but mine actually thickens up and causes infections in my lungs. So today is a clinic appointment and CF clinic is always kind of frustrating and uh, gives me anxiety. When I do PFTs, like there's so much writing on the number because that's the number of how much percentage of lung function I have left. Today I blew a 25, so that means I am working with 25% of my lungs. So not amazing and for quite some time now I haven't been feeling the best. So unfortunately that means I get to come in to the hospital for a two week stay, which they give me like high dose IV antibiotics to <coughs> kill the bacteria in my lungs and uh, four breathing treatments a day and half an hour of pulmonary rehab a day. <coughs> I have a theme every time I'm in here and this theme, it was sunshine, rainbows, and unicorns, all things happy. And everyone's been loving it and like everyone's like been like super pumped to get behind it and so getting unicorn care packages, unicorn band-aids, and unicorn balloons, like, so it's been fun. And I think it's great for the hospital staff as well, because these rooms are boring and drab and so sterile. It's like when they come in and they see like a bright, fun, cheery room, I think it just like alters the mood right away. And it's good for myself, because I also don't have to just look at a boring wall. It's like fun to like, look at these colorful balloons, you know. You want to know how it really started out. We were sitting in the living room and I was just kind of playing around with Summer when she was like, how old? One year? Less than she that. was less, uh, 10 months at 10 that months. time. And I had a little kiss your baby campaign on it. It said, if you love your child, kiss your baby and see if it tastes salty. She was outside. She'd been out in the mm. playpen with her brother. And I thought, well, she's been outside. She's kind of sweaty. I called my doctor because we were going into um, the primary to have some allergy tests done on her. And he says, well, 99% chance she does not have CF. So they did a sweat test on Summer to find out if she had CF. And the next day my doctor calls me and he was actually crying on the phone. And he says, Summer has CF and I can't believe. So we had to go up to the university and have her retested again and her brother to make sure that he had, didn't have CF. And of course he didn't at that time, but Summer was positive. So when I was growing up, I didn't really tell a lot of people that I have cystic fibrosis. And my parents, their, their whole philosophy was they wanted me to just live life to the fullest and kind of do my thing. So I was in dance company, I was a cheerleader in high school, and I was very active just to like get the mucus up and out of my lungs. Um, my mentality growing up was just to try and be as normal as possible. And I think that maybe that's helped me live a longer life. For a long time, I just didn't have medications that I did daily. When I was in eighth grade, I believe I got my first medication that I was to nebulize every day. So when I was 11 months old to eighth grade, I had basically no medications that I was doing daily. My parents would pound me, which is like CPT, which is a clap on the back or the sides. And I would wake up extra early to do that. I'm grateful that I was born when I was born because I did have a normal life. I just think of all the little kids now that are put on like all these medications and they have to do like these long treatments that I have to do now right from the get-go and they're gonna live long lives which is awesome but also CF is like 
a huge part of their lives. CF is really isolating disease. We can't actually be around each other and that is because of cross-infection. So we can give each other bacteria back and forth. I can't give it to someone who doesn't have CF, but I could give it to someone with CF. I started FaceTime treatment time with a couple of these little CFers that are local here. And we would do our treatments together. And I taught uh, Dre how to do a sinus rinse. Uh, Dre lives here locally, she's eight, and um, I've actually, I think I've taught a couple of them now how to do a sinus rinse, and they're rock stars, and they are my little heroes, because they, like I said, they are put on like all these medications, and this, they have this like huge regimen that they have to do every day, and I couldn't imagine doing that when I was that little. I've always been a huge advocate with the CF Foundation. I am an artist. I would paint paintings and send them to different fundraisers around the U.S. That was my way to give back to the community and do my part. Love Debris just kind of evolved every year after that started. So my brother, I think in 2005, put a website together for me. So I wanted Love Debris to be kind of a positive outlook and a place where parents of these children that were just diagnosed could like see that there was an adult with CF that was like thriving and living a normal life, yet still doing all the medications and treatments for CF. I've gotten Love to Breathe trademarked and I started some Love to Breathe tokens. This is one of my favorite projects. It was just to spread love in the world and make the world a better place because let's be honest, and the world could use more love. At the same time, if they went to my website that was on there, then they would learn about cystic fibrosis. On my tokens is my logo, the heart, and on the back it says, keep it past it, hold it close. Whatever you choose to do, love will follow through. There's been so many amazing stories that have come from that, and it's been so rewarding. And if someone finds one, they'll take the time to email me. I think there's 8,600 in circulation right now, and they're in over 68 countries and all the states. So it's it's really been pretty unbelievable, this like project. My parents actually started the local chapter here in Utah. When I was diagnosed 38 years ago, there wasn't a chapter for the foundation here in Utah. And then we just started fundraisers and started just doing anything we could to help prolong my life and others with CF. Together we started the uh, Cystic Fibrosis Foundation here in Utah. So many people didn't know what CF was. And from then on, then we had a small little taste of Utah. And it was very small, very private, I guess, but it was just a starting. And now we've expanded and it's gone so far. We were at the Grand America and we have such a wonderful taste of Utah and it brings in so much money for cystic fibrosis. I believe it comes in about 350,000 for that particular night, that each year it's been 340 to 370, somewhere in that neighborhood. So, so it is a Fantastic, very uh, yeah. um, worthwhile charity, obviously. And, it, and we're it, proud that we started it. Yeah, we started it ourselves, yeah. So I just wanted to say real fast while the parents are together is that um, I love these two more than life. And I think support system is huge when you're going through anything. And most importantly, like, if you have any ailment, the support system is huge. And um, I was definitely blessed with an amazing support system. My family is behind me and supports me, and my friends are awesome. But um, really, these two, uh, they do everything for me, and they really mean the world to me. And I fight every day, I think, uh, for them. They are the reason why I fight. and. Um, I think that it's important for me to uh, fight hard for them because I would never want them to have to like, go through the pain of losing a daughter or their favorite kid. Come on. So, um, but really, it is it is them that I do what I do and the reason why I fight so hard. And we fight for her because we love her to the world. And she's our favorite daughter, of Thanks. course. <laughs> favorite kid. <laughs> love you guys too.